Whether traveling by car or by plane, when getting from A to B, we tend to take location services for granted. However, an emerging trend affecting aviation and other modes of transport too is location or GPS spoofing. I'm here at Cranfield University, one of the UK's leading aviation research institutions, to speak with Peter Terry Brown, General Manager at Spirant Communications, to find out more. Peter, what kind of threat does spoofing pose to civil aviation right now? I think it's a, it's a great question because it's something which is exploding. You see it in the, in the press constantly. Um, it poses two main kind of considerations and threats, I think. One set are social and one set are, are economic. Social, we need to understand that, that aviation is a part of the fabric of society. So it's, it's how international trade is done. It's uh, how we do business. It's uh, how we travel for our vacations and go and meet our loved ones. So it's absolutely critical. And we have an expectation and understanding that, that is a fantastically safe form of travel. A million people right now up in the air. And the vast majority of them feel very, very safe about where they are. Where they are. We have a right and a need to expect that aviation is safe. And, uh, and a number of those aircraft um, do not know precisely where they are. And is there any kind of sense of the scale of the problem right now? It's, it's very regional. So in some areas, a majority of aircraft are experiencing some kind of impact. In other areas, at the moment, they're not experiencing spoofing at all. But it's a material percentage of aircraft that are being spoofed uh, right now. And, and that has an impact. If you're six miles up in a metal tube traveling at 500 knots, you, you need an expect precision because mm. uh, you have an expectation that the airline industry is phenomenally safe. It is. It needs to maintain that. The second point is economic. So when aircraft are, are landing, particularly on approach in bad weather, um, if they lose these systems, they'll need to go to another airfield. And that causes economic impact to not just the passengers who have to divert and go somewhere else, but also to the airlines who've got an aircraft in the wrong location. Also, when systems are spoofed, they, some, they can't be reset easily in the air. They have to be reset on the ground by trained engineers that are sometimes available. Or the kit itself has to be deracked, sent to a factory, recalibrated and reinstalled. All of that causes aircraft downtime in an incredibly competitive and busy schedule for airlines. Question is, why is this spoofing happening? I, I call it collateral damage. So it, it's electronic collateral damage. Uh, we see in many areas of the world where there are, um, there are conflicts go ongoing. Uh, that spoofing is used as a mechanism in, in battle. Uh, and the physics of it means that, that aircraft civil avi aviation is dragged into that envelope and also impacted unintentionally um, by what's happening on the battlefield. Because we, I mean, we track this um, real time and you'll see an area that is, being, that is being spoofed in the morning. In the afternoon, it's completely clear and, and vice versa. And the other thing that, that worries me is that at the moment it is, it is confined to a specific area. Um, increasingly, we're starting to see it move into, into other areas. Uh, we're seeing it sometimes in the continental United States. We're seeing it in South America. Uh, we're seeing it more than just these, um, these highly publicized uh, areas of conflict. And what kind of options does the aviation industry have to mitigate this problem? I think the industry is already responding, as you would expect. It's an industry that's built on safety and takes it incredibly seriously. Um, there are a couple of things that can happen, one in the longer term and one in the, in the shorter term. In the longer term, we're developing hardened uh, antenna, similar to those that are used in the military, uh, and the application of those into civilian airliners is going to substantially reduce the risk. It takes kind of two to five years to make that happen. In the short term, it's about equipping the most important safety element of an aircraft, and that's the pilot and the aircrew. So you need to provide them with the knowledge and the understanding, because if they have that, they can mitigate the vast majority of risks. That's done in two, two ways. Firstly, test your systems. Simulate spoofing on all of your avionics systems to see how they respond. Once you know how they respond, you can write procedures, train the aircrew, and the aircrew can treat it like they would any other uh, denial of a piece of equipment on board an aircraft. The second thing is to provide the aircrew with real-time information on what's being spoofed and where. Uh, and there are solutions. We've developed a solution very recently that provides real-time information on on the areas of spoofing dynamically. So pilots can know based on their flight track. Dispatch can know based on the flight track. 
uh, where their aircraft are going to go into an area of spoofing, and they can take the appropriate actions to protect their systems, protect their aircraft, and protect their passengers. And is it just aviation that's being affected by spoofing? You know, it started in maritime, actually. It started right. in around the Black, the Black Sea, so it's not just aviation. Um, and this is why it's important to crack this, because increasingly we, things are becoming automated. We talk about the low altitude economy, we talked about the increase in drones, um, we talked about autonomous driving. When we get to hyper accuracy and we're able to, to, to show how something can be positioned within a centimeter, and we have cars that are operating partly on that, on that uh, capability, how hard it is to be able to spoof becomes super important. Um, it becomes almost critical national infrastructure. You have to be able to depend on something working properly um, if you are re relying on it um, for, um, for societal development. What role is Spiron playing in delivering all of these? We've over 40 years experience in this, in this area. Uh, we understand and we've been working with, um, with militaries to um, avoid the impact of spoofing for, for decades. So we have the technology and the experience to be able to counter it. Um, but we're working with um, organizations like here at Cranfield, like some of our major customers in the airline industry uh, and the aircraft manufacturing industry to look at the problem and to, and to combat it. So the important thing is there's not a single answer. Um, it's not a single mind. It's a collaboration and a consolidation of the very best thinking to make sure that we have the very best solutions to keep something as critical as, uh, as aviation as safe. Peter, fascinating area of work. Thank you very much indeed for sharing it with us. Thank you.